So, hello everyone. My name is Flippa Murat and I work as a lawyer at IIS. And I'm here today to talk about the local ADR, the Alternative Dispute Resolution for the Swedish Top Domain essay. And I'm no football fan, so you will only see text. Um, I will start with a short um, explanation of what ADR is and why we offer it. And um, then I will address the de developments we have seen um, and what we can expect. So we offer ADR, the Alternative Dispute Resolution, as an alternative to court. Uh, ADR is le legally secure, faster and cheaper than a court procedure, and can be used by anyone who believes that a name that they are entitled to, for example a business or a trademark, uh, has been registered by someone else uh, as, a, that as a domain. And we handle only basic disputes. Uh, the claim is either approved or denied. And decisions taken within the ADR can't be appealed within the context of ADR. Uh, and if, uh, if there is an approval, uh, we will uh, uh, enforce the decision after 14 days if the domain holder hasn't taken the case to court. And if the application is denied, there is no hindrance for applying again. But of course, in order to have a different outcome, there is need for new circumstances. So, uh, since 2003, we registered uh, uh, as a domain according to the first come, first serve principle. And that means that anyone who applies for an available domain gets, gets it without any preliminary examination. And appeals against the allocation of a Datesa domain are then done to ADR. And as I said before, it, we offer it as an alternative to court. And also since 2006, it is a legal requirement for us to provide an eff effective dispute resolution. Uh, we also subsidize the application fee and refund half of the fee if the applicant wins. And this is made in order to keep the uh, proceeding accessible and not a hindrance for those parties that want to try an allocation of a domain name. The proceeding works in that way that we administer the proceeding, meaning that we receive and send out the applications and the answers after examination if they fulfill the requirements. Uh, but all ADR cases are tried um, by an arbitrator that is appointed by us. Uh, all arbitrators are experienced lawyers and knowledgeable within the area of intellectual property. They include professors, barristers or IT lawyers. And the arbitrators are independent from us uh, and decides the matter uh, independently, independently from the rules that apply and the developed practice. And normally these matters are determined by one arbitrator, but if one of the parties requests it, three, three arbitrators will decide the matter. And the proceeding is completely in writing. The, a, a decision is made within 10, 30 or 60 days, depending on the case. And here is just a small summary of how it works. The administration part, and then the decision part, and then the uh, uh, fulfillment of whatever decision it was. In order to have a successful claim, there are three conditions that has to be met. First, the applicant must have a right, uh, for example a brand or a company name, with a legal basis in Sweden, and the domain name must be identical or similar to it. And secondly, uh, the domain name must be, have been registered or used in bad faith. And thirdly, the domain holder shall have no right or any legitimate interest in the domain name. And all three conditions must be met in order for the applicant to win. 
Examples of bad faith could be that uh, the domain holder takes advantage of or plans to take advantage of the good reputation, the market position or the characteristic features of the applicant to attract traffic to their own website. Or it could be that the domain name is being used or planned to be used to disrupt the applicant's operation. Or it could be that the domain name was registered to be sold to the applicant. Example of a right or justified interest with the holder could be that the domain name is being used or has been registered to be used in its linguistic meaning. Or it could be that the domain name is used in a legitimate way uh, which doesn't infringe the applicant's rights. So that's some short information about what ADR is, and I will now address the developments of what we have seen and what we can expect. Uh, first, some statistics. Here is a comparison made between year 2003, when the ADR was introduced, and the latest three years. So as you can see, the number of complaints have doubled this 11 years. But if you compare it to the number of registered domain names, um, it is only a very small part of the uh, registered domain names that go to ADR. Uh, regarding answer rates, in 2003, the answer rate was about 75%. But thereafter, the number has slowly decreased, and 2014, the answer rate was about 41%. Approval rate has been quite even over the years. It's around 70%, and that means, of course, that in average, 30% of the cases are denied. And the most common reason for uh, denial is a lack of bad faith with the holder, followed by a lack of a legal right with basis in Sweden of the applicant. A development we have made is the accelerated proceeding. It's a fast and cheap way uh, when the domain holder doesn't answer. Uh, accelerated proceeding was introduced 2011. And it means that in an ADR application, uh, the applicant may request this accelerated proceeding. And this means that if the domain holder doesn't answer, uh, the arbitrator determines the decisions in 10 days instead of the normal 30. All three conditions are tried and have to be met. But the reasons in the decision are only brief and the case of the cost, uh, the cost of the case is lower. We have seen that in 2012, 14 out of 66 decisions were these accelerated decisions. And 2014, it was 32 out of 59. And last year, we saw that 91% of the applicant chose accelerated proceeding as an option in case of no response from the holder. Uh, we can see that the increased knowledge of what accelerated proceeding is has resulted in more applications uh, requesting it as an option if the domain holder wouldn't answer. We can also see a high number of the obvious cases where the domain holder knows he or she will lose and don't bother to answer, resulting in an accelerated proceeding. And it has shown to be a successful alternative to get at the obvious cases in a fast and uh, cheap way. What have we more seen? We have seen that since we have focused on informing the public about our ADR and how it works, uh, mainly through our website, uh, we have seen, and together with the fact that the, that the procedure has been up and running for a couple of years now, we have noticed that there are less questions of general character and more knowledge of the proceeding. Uh, we have also seen less insufficient applications, probably due to the fact that the proceedings are today more common but we have also seen a larger tendency to use a legal representative when applying for ADR. So we can hopefully consider that the system is well known and well functioning. 
We have also seen that the ADR practice is getting better known and uniform, with the result of fewer cases in comparison with the growth of number of domain names. We have also seen more direct contact from parties via the registry with uh, in the intention to contact the holder, uh, maybe to offer to buy the domain name or in order to send a warning letter uh, with a warning of infringement. Uh, and this is the first step that is more and more common today to avoid a dispute. We do also believe that the domainers today know due to the developed practice when they will win or lose and act thereafter, either with an answer or a concept or don't answer at all. We have also seen that the most common disputes are the simple and obvious cases, which most end up at accelerated proceedings. But we have also seen the more complicated cases where the actual dispute is located much deeper. It could be parties disagreeing on, on what is agreed between them concerning cooperation or ownership of the domain names, or it could be questions of whether the party is duly qualified to apply or not. And these are questions that has to be handled outside ADR due to its complicity. We have also seen that most cases concern trademarks or business names, but according to our terms and conditions, uh, it is also possible to apply for ADR with the legal basis in, for example, a family name, an artist name, a title of a copyrighted work, a name of an official designations, or a name of a government authority. We have seen them occur, but we haven't seen an increased number of these rights. So to sum up, we could say that ADR today is a well-functioned procedure with known and uniform practice. But could one say that uh, the domain market is almost saturated with regards to the domain names dispute? I wouldn't say it's saturated, but many of the typical cases have been tried, and there is now a clear practice uh, of these cases. And the level of cases will probably be very fairly uh, steady onwards. What can we more expect? We, I think that we can expect a steady stream of cases, with the majority of them being the obvious ones. But I also believe that we will continue to see these more complicated cases with much deeper underlying dispute due to corporations going wrong, etc. And these would probably end up in court instead. Uh, if you want more information about us and our ADR, you can visit our webpage, and we also have all the, all the decisions there published. And with that, I'm finished, and say thank you. Thank you, Filippa. Is there uh, anyone who has any questions for her? Yes, can you see? Again, I'm asking how many people are doing now the proceeding? Um, we have uh, the administration. Uh, we, you, we are Jenny. <laughs> it is, uh, I think we say half a person. <laughs> and then we have 13 uh, independent arbitrators deciding the case. But it's Jenny and I do some work as, as well, the administration. But it's Thanks. Any more questions to Filippa? No, so thank you very much, Thanks. Filippa.